everyone. Welcome to Darwinian Latin Talk. This is Bree. Today we're going to look at Darwinian bridge across heterogeneous blockchains and walk you through how the bridge works. First, let's just take a recap on what current cross-chain solution landscape is. Moving crypto asset across heterogeneous blockchains has been a very challenging task. Many teams have proposed their solutions with various approaches. Um, basically, these solutions fall into following categories. Each solution has its pros and cons. Previously, Hashem Block has solved the problem of atomic swap, but it's not actually transferring across blockchains. It is also a very complex setup, has many other problems. Uh, now, the mostly used bridge is a custodian model, but it varies from the centralization level. No one yet has come to a trustless level. Therefore, trust is greatly needed in this model and is exposed to centralization risks. Uh, Collateral-based X-Game protocol is relatively new, but being there law requires some deposit, so it highly relies on price fee, and the collateral value may fluctuate. This might endanger the whole protocol. Also, it doesn't work with low liquidity asset or NFT because the price is uh, subjective or unreliable. And then Chain Relays, the light client. The most decentralized and pioneer project is the BTC Relay, which implemented a light client of Bitcoin on uh, Ethereum using smart contract to allow Ethereum smart contract to verify whether a submitted transaction actually exists in a light client um, to therefore identify whether the event actually occurred on Bitcoin. However, it was not very successful uh, because of the high maintenance incurred when relaying every and each block of Bitcoin network. Incentives were not there to attract relayers to do the job. Darwinia Bridge takes a chain relay approach because it's truth-based. We also found ways to improve the classic chain relay to address mentioned problems. It's a super light client and we call it Darwinia Relay. We also incorporate Merkle Mountain Range to generate chain head commitment and supplement info in a relayed block header. We also leverage optimistic verification game process to ensure the chain relay is accessible to at least one honest firm mode or relayer. With these innovations, we get a sublime linear relay, which means we don't need each and every block of foreign chains relayed. Um, even we can achieve relay on demand. This makes Darwinia relay economically feasible. Before we dive into some details, let's take a brief look at Darwinia's protocols. It consists three core protocols, which is issue, transfer or swap, and redeem. In the diagram, we illustrate the process of moving some tokens from the source chain, we call it the backing chain, to the target chain, and we call it the issuing chain. Let's look at the top right diagram. The user, we call it the requester, sends his asset to the backing contract on the backing chain to lock up his found. And then he submits um, the transaction info to the issuing contract on the issuing chain it's like saying, hey, issuing chain, here is the proof of locking my asset and please issue me the same amount of this shadow value symbol on this issuing chain. And then the issuing chain check the chain relay if this transaction is included in the backing chain. If yes, uh, the issuing chain will issue the assets to the requester's address on the issuing chain. When a requester receives this token, he can use it as any other normal token. He can trade it, transfer it to someone else, or use it in a game if it represents an NFT, or use it on a DeFi DApp on issuing chain. The shadow token has this value because it's redeemable in a permissionless way. Any holder can reverse the issuing process. We call it the redeem process. Uh, which is illustrated in the bottom right diagram. It is similar to the transfer protocol. Now you know the chain relay is very important. It provides objective verification service for smart contracts. Now let's dive into some details. In a block relay to the chain relay, unless the block header already has an MMR info, the relayer has to supplement a MMR info because the majority of legacy blockchain headers don't have these MMR info. Um, a MMR root is the root of previous block header hashes. If you're not familiar with MMR, it's a variant of the traditional Merkle tree. When new leaf is added, you don't need to recomputer all previous leaves. Instead, you can append it to a previously computed um, MMR root to get a new root with the minimum computation. Uh, imagine you have a chain of 1 million blocks 
uh, you don't need to go through all the history when new block is produced. Previous block header MMR embedded in the block header. Now we can verify whether a given block header hash belongs to the current chain as we maintain the latest header. For example, we only need to verify two blocks, one genesis block and a block header of 1000 height, then we're able to verify any block hash within this 1000 long chain. When a transaction verification starts, the requester just sends the block info along with the transaction info, and then our chain relay starts to first verify if the block is within the longest chain. If yes, we can trust the info in the block and use this transaction Merkle route to verify the submitted transaction. So how do we identify a block submit is valid? Let's check out optimistic verification game. Besides basic cryptography proofs and consensus rules, a submitted transaction must pass, a malicious attack may steal for the light client with its fork or pre-mined block data. Uh, as any implementations of a light client, our chain relay must make sure it is accessible to at least one honest for node, in our case at least one relayer. Each relay is a bet. There is a challenging period before it is accepted if no other relayer challenges. Honest relayers can challenge with better block info. The challenging period may have several rounds as challenging relayers are providing previous blocks along the chain. Eventually, the attacker will run out of pre-forked blocks or reach to the ultimate ground zero, the genesis block. Each round, the relayer and the challenger must put larger bets for a quicker resolution and a denial of service attack. We call it optimistic because with this stick bet, and ultimate resolution mechanism, rational attackers will give up before even start. You can watch the interesting animation of our optimistic verification game. After examining the mechanism of Darwinia Relay, Darwinia Bridge can operate in a self-service mode. For example, a requester, after logging up is found, he can submit a proofs and the relayed block info to the chain relay himself. After the block is accepted, the event is confirmed as well. The chain relay maintenance cost can be a pay-as-you-go mode. In general, Darwinia Bridge is based on truth, a super light client Darwinia Relay. No trust is needed, it's economically feasible, it's pricing sensitive, it also supports low liquidity assets and NFT. That's what a truly decentralized bridge should be. It should remain objective and neutral. And it also doesn't rely on pledge or collateral to ensure its security. Darwinia Network is a bridge chain, serves as a transit station. In, in the model on the left, um, direct bridges need to be established between every two chains. For example, chain A needs to establish three bridges and six um, chain relays of the three destinations to achieve the goal of moving assets to each destination. In a right mode, each chain just needs to connect it to Darwinia network. It serves as a bridge chain. It can forward and route your asset to any chains connected. It saves much work repeated and waste. It also greatly benefits those smaller chains. Finally, let's quickly summarize some takeaway points of today's talk. Um, Darwinia Relay is a super light client, a chain relay. It adopts efficient chain commitment MMR and optimistic verification game. It achieves sublinear performance. Darwinia Network is a bridge chain, an open cross chain bridge protocol. It serves as a critical infrastructure to help build future Internet of Tokens. Any single chain application, including games, uh, DeFi, DEX, can upgrade into a cross-chain version through our Darwinia network. I'm also very honored to be a member of Darwinia team. Our project has received Web3 Foundation grant, we just joined Substributor program and Web3 Foundation Bootcamp. Darwinia has also been recognized as a friend of Polkadot and Substrate in Polkadot Live Paper. Finally, a surprise, we're going to have another live event on Polkadot Crowdcast on May 11. Please sign up and save your spot to check out more Darwinian tech highlights.